to share with you uh, the past experience of where the partners liked using the rubber stuff the most. So if you take a look at this, uh, this bullet, basically there are several areas where the rubber stuff is used the most. Naturally, configuring a new company. So let's say that you need to set up a new company, you create a, a perfect setup in your home database, then you export that perfect setup from the database and then use it again and again to set up new companies. So new functional area or industry specific setup. You, you can slice these rubber stuff packages in, in smaller portions. Like for example, you don't have to have the entire setup of the full application in one package. It could be a combination of smaller packaging, packages, each containing setup for a specific area. Like one package for financials, one package for inventory, one package for jobs, one package, package for ISV solution, and so on. Now there is an interesting scenario configuring uh, using rapid start and transitioning from uh, from trial version to production version. So let's say that you've deployed a certain solution to the customer and the customer has been playing with this solution for, for a week or two or three and then changing some settings, importing some data, playing with data and now they say, okay, it looks perfect, I love NAD, I want to move on further but I want to use exactly the same setup as, as here in this database in my new company. So how can you get this information to the new company leaving all the transactions and uh, documents and all the things that the customer was playing with in the old trial version? Proper stuff can be used there too. Working with dimensions, it was an interesting concept. It started as a small feature, really. So it was, it was partly available in RIM. So what you could do, you could uh, export all your customers and you could export all your uh, dimensions and then you could try to match them using some, some magical keys in Excel, link them together. So what, what happened in 2013, uh, we actually merged these two tables together uh, in, inside of the RapidStart application. So they are completely separate tables, but when you export them, for example, in Excel, you see them as, as one record. So you see the customer record plus the dimension fields, which made it possible to edit uh, dimensions for customers, for example, in, in a very natural fashion, instead of just linking them in, in some odd way. We'll get through that as well. And then, of course, one interesting scenario, uh, some partners say that they use Rapid Start to teach their customers NAV. So we'll, we'll look at this scenario and how it can be used. It's actually quite an interesting twist. It, it's funny how it happens with, uh, with the NAV features that, that we ship. Sometimes you think that it can be used for one or two or three things, but when it goes out to you, to partners, it can be used in, in, in a hundred of different ways. And this is, this is one of the interesting ways where, where partners are using RapidStart to, to teach customers how to use NAV. Of course, data editing and data migration. So this is one of the strongest part of the RapidStart. Uh, there is there's a plenty of scenarios, not necessarily during the implementation project, so then there's a plenty of scenarios when you want to bring in some data from external source into NAV. Or you may want to, to work with NAV data in Excel. And RapidStart is flexible enough to let you export any table, any field into Excel, then edit it there, add a few records, put it back into NAV and then take it from there. So mass edit, bulk edit, change and replace all the Excel possibilities all of a sudden available to, to all the customers who can use RapidStart. And of course data exchange. That's another interesting twist on the RapidStart feature that some completely different companies which use it, well, pretty much the same structure of their tables, they can exchange data with each other. So they can send uh, sales documents from one company to another using the RapidStart package or permissions or some master data like I will send you my customers, there you go, RapidStart package. So this data exchange all of a sudden is a scenario that, that is supported by our stuff. There is another big, um, not, not, not a big, but there's some discovery to the rapid stuff process. So what happens is uh, we say that okay, NAV is uh, trying to build up another another channel called repeatable business, and then what happens is that 
in, in, in this channel, partner will be selling identical solutions to many customers. So there's, there's the same packaged solution, and then you sell it to 50 customers. And then what, ha what often happens is that uh, several hosting companies or, or volume providers, what they do, they, they actually don't use RapidStar for that. Because what they do, they create a set of SQL backup databases. So just, just to backup, reconfigure it with a specific setup. And then they use this uh, environments to, to provision a new customer. So let's say that you, you add a new customer in the construction business. So you take a SQL backup with the construction setup and you just restore it to the, to the environment and then the customer is running on that. So rapid start is not something that is, uh, that is very popular in these scenarios because SQL backup is way faster than rapid start. But where rapid start uh, comes into play is, is another scenario. So let's say that uh, you give the customers a choice of which functional areas within the application you want to set up. So not like you're starting from a single database fully configured for your needs, but you give a customer a choice that I want these three standard areas of NAD plus these two add-on solutions, and I want them to be configured in my new environment. So that's where RapidStart comes into play, because using RapidStart you can combine multiple packages the ones that partner select, uh, customers select, and then import them into an empty, clean database. By that, setting up all these, these three areas and uh, whatever add-on solutions that the right database. Like this one. So it's, it's a clean database, and the customer picks to set up uh, financials and service management. So these two areas are added to the database. Because there is this... Uh, how do I call it? So it's kind of a feature in any need. So if, if you don't use an area in any need, it should it should actually be empty. Otherwise, there might be permissions problem when you when you use the application, right? So and and, and stuff is ensuring that. So you only set up the areas and the tables that you that users will actually use. And the areas which are not used, they are empty, and there are no permission problems when people are working with the application. Okay. So, before we go...